Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here on location at AWS reInvent, AWS as annual user conference, our 11th year covering it. It's been a great journey. Uh, we are here up in the press area and the show's kicking off today. We've got Mindy, Mindy Ferguson, Vice President of Streaming and Messaging. Data streaming, not video streams, we do, we do a lot of. And of course, this is part of this, our SuperCloud 5 special edition out of Palo Alto. We got guests coming on there. We got tons of content hitting. Check out siliconangle.com and our special report for the battle of AI supremacy. Tons of research, opinion pieces, and news. Mindy, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Great to see you and great chatting with you. Thank you so much for having me, John. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk about all things data streaming, not video streaming, but data streaming yeah. and what we're hearing from customers this week. Well, it's a fun event. This is probably one of my favorite years because of all the buildup of generative AI. Last year, not a lot of generative AI discussions, although Adam Schlesky did mention LLMs in my interview with him, but it wasn't part of the events. It really kind of kicked off with the whole generative AI craze. The generative AI movement is here. The consumers see it, they think it's magic, they see ChatGPT, they see the, the benefits. So when you see a user expectation uh, experience change, it's a switchover. So to me, it reminds me of the web, and okay, I get it, it's nascent, it's early on. It's going to change, but one of the things that's coming out of our, our research and our coverage is, if you have data, and you have data hygiene, and you're handling your data properly, you're set up for this generative movement because the chips are getting faster, there's all kinds of technology in the new mm -hmm. stack and the old stack, so if you have the data done right, it's a massive win for, for potentially changing the game for a company. This is kind of the big secret. It's out in the public, but you got to get the data right. You do, John, you do. Uh, data is absolutely the foundation for everything a business is sitting on. Like when you say we're, we're riding on the shoulders of giants, we're really riding on the shoulders of data when we make decisions. And so companies have long understood that they need high quality data. Mm -hmm. What they're understanding right now though is that it's more than just accuracy. It's also the timeliness of that, of that high quality data. And the timeliness then really adds into this generative AI space. Uh, I couldn't be more happy with how our data streaming services are set up to play in this gen AI world. Well, let's get into some news. You, you have some news that just shipped today, it's starting to hit now. We got some big announcements coming out tonight. It's the big kickoff on the infrastructure side with Peter DeSantis. What, are the new, what news do you have for us? You know, customers have been talking to us about a few different themes, uh, and we heard a lot about this at last year's reInvent. We've shipped a ton of new things in our streaming services over the past few weeks, and today we're shipping out one that we're quite proud of because customers have asked us for Amazon MSK on Graviton 3. And today we're doing that, it gives us 24% greater compute over an M5 instance. So this is MSK on an M7G uh, instance, 29% um, higher throughput. And get this, because I am so obsessed with our sustainability goals, I love this number, 60% better power efficiency over other similar EC2 instances. So I'm super excited about that. Teams work really hard. We've had a lot of customers asking us to be able to run Amazon MSK on Graviton 3, and today's the day. On the numbers there, that's the Graviton, with the Graviton combo, that's the improvement on energy. That's correct, that's okay. correct. Well, this is what I was just talking about early on in our opening today was, all the hype aside, at the end of the day, when people see the cost of the, of the bill that's going to come for the energy, and then they see their performance, this is going to, we're back to speeds and feeds again. No, no, no more solutions, it's not the solution. It's cool to talk about the speeds and feeds now, because it matters, it price is. performance is. is really what everyone's focused on right now. They're doing a lot of experimentation, but if you don't get it right, you don't get the data right, and you don't get the cost equation, performance equation right, then you might be on the wrong side of history with AI. This is a big discussion here this week. It's very true, and it's why Graviton 3 on MSK really plays in nicely to the, the Gen AI story, because 24% more compute over an M5 instance, 29% greater throughput. You know, customers are telling us that they need a lot more data to feed into their Gen AI models, and they want to use that data as a real differentiator to just using foundation models out of the box. And so, this is, this this is a tremendous day for us to be able to deliver for customers. So what was the customer conversation you had when you, were, when you heard the feedback, you guys build a product house, you guys work back from the customer, well-known Amazonian tech tactic. What was some of the use cases? What was the trouble spots? Just pain, suffering around speed, latency? Was it, what was the core problems that you guys were solving and delivering on? Well, there are a couple of things. You know, the cost <laughs> has been top of mind for a couple of years here, right? 
Uh, I came into AWS as a customer, so even as recently as 2022, cost was top of mind for me as a customer. And we definitely heard it last year in the 2022 reInvent. We're still hearing it again this year, although it's just getting started, so we'll see how the week plays out. But solving it from a cost point of view and just the yeah. sheer cost benefit of Graviton 3 is one thing. Um, people are looking for higher throughput, higher compute. They're looking for better performance uh, from just without making a great deal of architectural changes. Mm -hmm. And so that's what customers were asking us for. I will yeah. say Adam has done a tremendous job of yeah. talking about Graviton 3, and so customers are very excited about it, yeah. and what we've heard for the better part of a year now is when can we get MSK on Graviton 3? Well, the thing about Graviton that's interesting is it's third, the number three is in there. Other companies, uh, I think Microsoft announced like their chip and it's only for internal use. You guys have a lead on the game here. And the AI conversation is interesting because it's not just the chips that are in, it's what's around it. Mm -hmm. And so, if the, you get the, the data is like the bloodstream, moving data around has been a big discussion. If you're at the edge, you're going to have inference, you're going to have inference and compute are two big killer areas that we see in terms of um, interest because if you get inference right, then the applications can iterate in real time with the data. So again, That's right. the data is an ingredient into all AI uh, whether it's synthetic data or just other data, so pipelining it and having zero ETL, uh, which it was announced last year, was interesting. Um, I see the ET, but uh, e e I can see that ETL vision there. I mean, our data pipeline is going to be at some point run by AI. I mean, I can see. I mean, when I saw a 3D printer for the first time, I thought that was magical. I can imagine infrastructure could be provisioned similarly with AI. Like, okay, just provision me some data pipelines. I don't think we're, <laughs> I don't think we really truly know where we're going to go. I think customers will continue to push us on making each and every step forward. Mm -hmm. um, I do think we definitely hear from customers that data pipelines are not something that they want to replicate or do in parallel, specific for just generative AI use cases. They want to build a data pipeline once and they want to be able to use that across their organization. And they want to think about that pipeline as kind of the, the backbone across their data silos. And I think that, that is, uh, that's where they're pushing us today. They're going to push us tomorrow into even more new uncharted territory and we'll see where that goes. So I was talking to Adam Selesky and I want to get your reaction to this. Um, great, I, he said effective, an effective data strategy requires thought and understanding around what's available data, mm -hmm. and making sure it's harmonized and usable across applications. This is kind of a concept where data is now going to be the critical, critical agreement. It's not treated as a silo. It's got to be right. available. Low latency, available, real time, and multiple environments. Core cloud, maybe the edge. So inference will be a big part of that. How, how should customers be thinking about the scale as you look at some of the, the, those announcements you guys are making? Data's going to be flying around everywhere. Right, so it you, is. you're in the streaming messaging area. This is your, you're like the connective tissue for moving mm. data around. Yeah, so what a fun place to be, what, by the way. What a fun place. Talk about the scale that's coming. I mean, how big, scope the scale. Like, what are you seeing right now in terms of scale of, of the customer environments around how they're handling their data and what it could be with generative AI? Because I, I could imagine that it, it will be huge if data's going to be replicated at the edge, and be inferred on, you move the workloads to the, to the data. Data is a critical architectural challenge now. Absolutely it is. Well, first of all, let's go back in history for maybe five years, and let's think about how companies brought data into their organization five years ago. They had maybe a handful of data sources, maybe 10, but not too many. Today, data is coming out of absolutely everything, and even yeah. when I walk the, the floor of reInvent, my, my mind kind of explodes with thinking of all of these new pieces of technology mm -hmm. and how they're transmitting data. Think of the IoT space as an example. It's an incredibly uh, fascinating place. So companies have data coming at them from yeah. just magnitudes larger than what we saw even five years ago. So I think when we think about, uh, as an organization, we have to be able to think about how do we handle pipelines that can scale to the throughput needed of this larger data mm -hmm. set. Also thinking of the timeliness of that, like yeah. look at Kinesis data streams yeah. on demand. We just recently took that, the, the read and write up, we, we doubled it, so now I have two, two gigabytes per second of read throughput on, uh, on a Kinesis data streams on demand. That's just incredible, but customers keep pushing us for that. Yeah. I think next year when, you know, if you and I get a chance to talk okay. next year, <laughs> we're going to be talking about a whole different number yeah. than that because customers will continue to push us for higher and higher throughputs yeah. because they are seeing so much data. 
You know, what's interesting, Dave and I always talk about the, the waves we've seen in our lifetime. PC, I was a PC generation when I was in college, and then the web were two inflection points that I personally saw the same movie we're seeing now, which is the performance and price got better every time, mm -hmm. and the applications moved to that next level of threshold of, of opportunity. So Windows got faster in the PC, and the web, the web pages load faster, ba bandwidth happened, uh, was growing, but at the beginning, beginning of the web it was dial-up, was slow. But the, it just kept getting better. So I think, I think we're in the same AI wave now where we're going to see it um, kind of embryonic and growing. That's right. Where, okay, you put a wrapper around it, put some data, but if you have data laying around, like data exhaust, as they used to call it, AI could make, make sense out of that. So seeing, I'm seeing companies, we report on Silicon Angle, they take data that's laying around and they turn mm -hmm. it into gold. You turn the exhaust into gold. But that's kind of key for customers. So that's, I see that as a low, use, low hanging fruit use case. It is. Where, what should companies do, in your opinion? Because you've been at Amazon for a few years now, but you've been out building stuff in, uh, for companies and teams. What's the enterprise should do? What, if, what should we be thinking about as they look at this next architectural setup? Um, how to handle the exhaust data that's laying around, could be log files, or what net new data can they bill? I can imagine you know, people start to thinking differently. I will start aggregating data. So you're going to start to think, I think the low hanging fruit, what data do I have laying around and can use that AI can make value out of? And then the new data opportunities. How should companies and teams think about structuring their mindset, plans, architecture, product building? Yeah, I think it first starts with having a, a data strategy. I think that's super important. If you just start working towards a generative AI build and your goal is to put out a generative AI application, I'm not so sure that that's always going mm -hmm. to be the most successful. But you are right about something, which is almost every company has data that's lying around and they haven't been able to realize the value of that data. I think AI is going to be able to help us. Uh, but to be able to do that, we need to be able to actually capture and analyze that data. Being able to mm -hmm. do it with timeliness, so in real time, will allow us to find value that we never even saw in the data mm -hmm. that maybe we left on the floor, maybe yeah. we didn't consider. Um, I've worked at a number of companies yeah. where we've actually found really interesting use cases and real business solutions yeah. out of data where we never expected it. Um, we weren't looking for it, yeah. but we've been able to, to put that data together and find meaningful output. I think we're going to yeah. see a lot coming in the next couple of yeah. years from people finding things that they already had, yeah. already had yeah. in their own closet. <laughs> they just needed to open it up and say, oh my yeah. goodness, there it is. It's going to unleash some creativity too. Every employee, every, every person working could contribute big time to the, to the mission of an organization just by looking at the data and seeing the opportunity for value. So there's like a whole opportunity recognition wave coming with data that we've never seen before. That is so true, that is so true. I don't think we've even begun to scratch the surface here and yeah. I'm excited about the days and weeks that come. I'm, I'm excited to think about what reInvent yeah. will look like <laughs> next year. What will people have discovered out yeah. of their data? I know even this morning, I've had five meetings yeah. already this morning. I've had a couple breakfasts and lunches. Yeah. I'm, I'm being well fed yeah. while I'm here. So, um, But I will say, you know, we continue to hear yeah. from customers yeah. telling us, hey, I've just realized that yeah. real-time streaming data is so important for generative AI, I actually realize I don't have a true data strategy and I need to take a step back yeah. and think about that. So you know, if you're a company that's just getting started, if you're a company that has data around, yeah. I do think it's important to think about what is your data strategy? How are you planning yeah. to build data pipelines that go across your organization? Yeah. It will still allow you the flexibility and the architecture to branch out into new spaces like generative AI yeah. or just into feeding your traditional ML yeah. models with yeah fresh data, but I, I think the sky's the limit for where I we mean, can go. I mean, the, 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 the blood will need to flow through the body, data needs to flow through the organization, similar concepts. I mean, if you look at even just our, our chat, our GPT, and you look at um, the user, it's streaming the results. Gener mm. It's generative, <laughs> it's generating That's right. data. So I think the user experience is starting to stream. That's right. So streaming and messaging become key architectural conversations. Um, what are those conversations happen like? Like, okay, data warehousing, yeah, a couple of years ago, five years, I can see that. What's some of the conversations around pipelining and architecture? Um, is there platform engineering, is that a platform engineering conversation? Or is it a, I mean, data engineering and platform engineering to me are, seem synonymous now. Data has to they be. They are, they are synonymous. And we are having those types of conversations where customers are saying to us, 
I have this data, I know I need to do something with it, how can I think mm -hmm. about that across <laughs> the, en the entire life of my, yeah. of my organization? Yeah. And, and I think you know, we, it's really important for yeah. customers to, to work back from an end-to-end -end solution yeah. in their organization, instead of just going off and trying to solve for one thing. Uh, making sure that they're able to bring data in once, yeah. use it across their entire business. I mean, I have to ask you um, this question because you have a great background. You've worked in a lot of big organizations in the past, building uh, all your life and career. What's your um, observation or advice for people watching this now saying, hey, you know, what is the field of data going to look like as a career? Because, you know, computer science evolved, you've got data scientists, you've got platform engineering, DevSecOps now has gone mainstream with the cloud. Now you have a whole nother level. And like you said, next year could be next gen is here. So the next gen cloud is here. It's definitely next level in my mind. What's the career in data look like? I mean, I mean we know data warehouses, that's old hat, old, old and gone. Data is in the cloud. Now they're going to have to be edge networks set up, tons of networking. What is the data career? Well, you know, John, coming into AWS as a customer, and I, I've come from now three different companies who have made a transition into AWS. And so when I was coming into AWS, I chose this space. Like, I chose wanting to come into data messaging and streaming. This was where I wanted to be, and I chose it because I knew how incredibly rich this area was going to be. I know that this is a space where customers still have not yet found the untapped potential. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there is just so much opportunity. I'm not sure we're going to be done with this space <laughs> in a year or two. I think we've just only begun to scratch yeah. the surface. But I do think that there is a tremendous yeah. amount of urgency for companies that, you know, who are watching us today and they're wondering, yes. okay, it feels like maybe I should get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you really need to get started <laughs> because uh, the world is passing you by and the technology is now moving. This, this whole entire yeah. data space is moving at such a fast pace yeah. that I feel like we have to, there's, there's, there's a sense of urgency yeah. here. Yeah, I totally agree. I, in fact, we've been staying on theCUBE for years that like the SRE movement was all about large scale server management. One person can handle a bunch of server clusters. The data is going that same direction where there's going to be a lot more data, not enough headcount. Mm -hmm. So you have to come, you have to think of it like a platform. That's right. Not the database, because databases are going to be everywhere. So if you think of data as a platform, that's a different mindset. That's a systems kind of thinking, not just kind of just one thing. I think of it or, a little different than a platform. I think of it as a backbone. Think of it as you know, kind of what we were told the internet was going to be many years ago. Yeah. The internet was going to be this connectivity that brings yeah. us all together. Yeah. And data is really yeah. today's connectivity, today's backbone. Yeah. And it is, it's, quite a, yeah. it's, it's quite the platform that people yeah. will leverage, but I think it's more than just a, a traditional platform. And I think of it as a, a yeah. true living backbone. It's always going to be a living substance. Yeah, and getting data into the right place at the right time is the the, the was always talked about as a key thing. But now with generative AI, it's more important than ever because the better the data and the, if it's available, that makes the AI better. I mean, that's all about feeding the AI with the data. Yeah, if that's it, so true. Yeah. We see it in two different places. So, you know, data is really helpful in fine tuning. So, in places where data doesn't need to change very much, um, it, it's perfect for fine tuning use cases. Um, and then retrieval augmented generation is probably my the one that I'm the most passionate about. Um, I'll <laughs> say, you know, I'm not an expert by any means, so uh, don't ask me too many questions. <laughs> I, I think from the how to use your data in yeah. a in a, a rag use case, it's quite fascinating yeah. what customers are starting yeah. to do. Yeah. But in the IoT space, in the weather yeah. space, we're seeing so many different uses yeah. for data that changes at a very quick pace. Yeah. I saw Bill Vass, and we were talking in the hallway about uh, synthetic data mm. and how I was kind of skeptical, but he kind of cl clarified for me. I thought it, I didn't think it was going to be that real. He's like, no, it's very re relevant. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of looking at the whole synthetic data at the edge for IoT. It's another big thing going on. So again, data is the lifeblood of, of an organization if, if done properly. Couldn't say it better myself. Min Data Min is the lifeblood. Minnie, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you for, for sharing and uh, good luck with the rest of the show. Thanks for having me, John. Okay, we are on location here in Las Vegas for reInvent 2023 CUBE coverage. We'll be back after this break. <laughs>